Hey, let's see the back end with data to help us develop this front end. This will make it easier to see how the front end looks when it has to render multiple blocks and blocks with transaction data for that matter. So first up, head to the main index.js file of the overall project. To see this back end with data, we're gonna to want to add new blocks to the local blockchain over here. Ideally, we'd like this data to consist of some transactions. And to conduct transactions, well, we're gonna need multiple wallets, ideally, to work with. So after all the get methods for the API, and after the sync with root state code, but right before this peer port generation code, let's create a couple instances of wallets. First, we're gonna make one called wallet foo, so that way it can have a unique name. And secondly, let's create one called wallet bar. And overall, this gives us three wallets to work with. One, the local wallet for the main application. And then these two, wallet foo and wallet bar wallets for the seeding with development part of the app. Now, the idea is, that we're gonna conduct transactions between the main wallet and these new wallets, as well as in between each other, so wallet foo from wallet bar, to create transactional data. We'll want this to happen more than a few times though, so that way we get blocks consisting of multiple transactions. To help out with this, let's create a few helper methods that will allow us to generate transactions from each wallet. So first up, we're gonna generate a local helper method called generate wallet transaction. And this is going to help us make transactions from every single wallet. Now, a wallet transaction, when it calls create transaction to begin with, has a recipient and an amount. So let's have those as parameters to generate wallet transaction, the function itself. But for this helper method, we're going to have an additional field within the incoming object that is the actual wallet to make a transaction from. OK, so with this, in this method, let's create a local transaction constant. And then this will be the result of calling wallet.createTransaction on the given wallet to the actual generate wallet transaction method. Cool. Now this create transaction method takes in an inner object, and this has a recipient as well as an amount, and then a chain in order to keep track of the accurate blockchain balance based off the blockchain history or rather the accurate wallet balance based off the blockchain history. Cool, now this will create a transaction for any wallet that we pass in according to a recipient and an amount. Now the result of this is we're not really so concerned about returning the transaction value as much as we are concerned about setting this transaction in the transaction pool. So call transaction pool dot set transaction. Now the reason why we want this transaction to end up in the pool is that when we call mine transactions from the transaction miner, it's gonna to look to the pool for transactions to mine. So therefore we want this new transaction to be within the pool. Okay, now this allows us to create three more methods that will generate the wallet transaction for the main wallet, the wallet foo, and the wallet bar by calling this new generate wallet transaction helper. First up, we have a main wallet to generate an action for. So let's have a helper method called wallet action. And this will be the result of a callback function, which inlines a return to calling generate wallet transaction. For the wallet, the wallet that we want to generate the transaction for is, well, the main wallet. So all we have to pass in for the wallet field is the main wallet class, or rather the main wallet instance. The recipient can be one of the two, so how about wallet foo, since that is the next one. And let's give it a smallest transaction, so how about five currency? All right, cool. Let's do the same thing for wallet foo and wallet bar. We're gonna have a wallet foo action. And then this is the result of a callback function which calls generate wallet transaction. We'll have a wallet, but then this time, the wallet foo is gonna be the wallet conducting the transaction. So the key value for wallet is wallet and then wallet foo. The recipient is gonna be the next guy. So wallet bar dot public key is gonna be the recipient and the amount will be 10 in this case. Finally, we have the wallet bar action, which is pretty much the same thing. So have a callback to generate wallet transaction. The wallet in this case though is different. This time it's the wallet bar. The recipient, the only recipient to not get anything yet is the main wallet. So let's make it the main wallet.public key. 
cool. So notice that it kind of goes in a circle. Everyone is a recipient and everyone is also generating a wallet transaction respectively. And the amount in this one, let's go with 15. All right. So overall, these helper methods can now create transactions multiple times, depending on how many times we call the methods themselves. So let's run a method 10 times, or rather a loop 10 times, to conduct a combination of these transactions. In each loop, we're going to call a different sequence of these three actions, and we'll switch a combination of which actions are done in thirds. So first up, let's track if the i incrementing value is currently divisible by 3, and the remainder is 0 using the modulo operator. And in this case, let's call the wallet action, and let's also call the wallet foo action. All right, nice. Now let's also get to the case where the i incrementer, when divided by 3, has a remainder of 1. So this gets to cases like 4 and 7. In this case, we'll call the wallet action as well. But the second one is going to be the wallet bar action. And then in all other cases, let's call the wallet foo action and the wallet bar action since this combination hasn't been created yet. Nice. So this should make an even spread of transactions overall, and a bunch of them. All right. And finally, what we want to do is we want to mine these transactions that have been created. And for that, we have the transaction miner. So notice that we're going to use the transaction miner in every loop at the end. And let's call the mine transactions endpoint. And this should get all the transactions in the transaction pool, and then mine them and add them to the blockchain. All right. So go ahead and save that. So make sure you have all of the changes. So the wallet bar action, wallet foo action, wallet action, and this generate wallet transaction helper. It was kind of a bit of code that came by pretty fast, but the overall point is that we're generating a bunch of transaction data and then actually using the code to generate the data and then mining the transactions. All right, back in the command line now, fire npm run dev in the overall command line for the project. Now we're going to get a huge dump of output, but this is because we're attempting to mine the transactions multiple times. So you see that there's all this data, but this is promising because this will make it so that when we visit our front end now, that we're going to see more than just the Genesis block on the application. So at localhost 3000, let's give it a refresh. And then what we see is a lot more hashes in the actual front end. Sweet. So note that the intention is for this code to be temporary. If we wanted to deploy this code for public usage in production, we definitely take out this arbitrarily generated data to make sure it's not part of the public application. To prepare again for a production version, we'd either remove this entire chunk of code or introduce some kind of special flagging logic to make sure that this only runs while we're developing. But now that we have much more data to work with in terms of the blockchain and visualizing it, let's now focus on stylizing the application. Right now, the front end is a bit of a site for sore eyes. And at this point, it's so HTML skeleton like that it's only going to make those sore eyes even sore. <laughs> so let's make this app look much sleeker next.